Hey everybody, it's Mandy from Travel Forge. We've done apple cider before. I have a video about that. We did it with the So juicer. I'll link that video. We just used an electric juicer. It worked really well. We used the byproduct to make apple butter, which I also have a video on and I can link. But shortly after that, Zad found this freaking awesome cider press on Marketplace. I think it's all original. Yeah? But I think the, the metal parts are original. I think somebody redid the base. Okay. Because there's carriage bolts, like stainless steel carriage oh, bolts. Yeah. That wouldn't be period correct. But nonetheless, the majority of it's there. And still super cool. So um, we went and picked this up from a lady. Yeah. She was so super nice. It was like, I don't know if we got the whole backstory from her. It was it like, was her it was her friends. Uh, maybe it was like a grandmother's. I don't know. Nonetheless, it was super cool and something that we really wanted to try. Um, the electric juicer worked, but we definitely had to like take several breaks because it's made to like, you know, make something in the morning. It's not made to make 15 gallons of apple cider. This, however, is made for that. So we are excited. And then shortly after that, we found a fruit crusher. Um, so cheap. This guy, um, it was his great grandfather's. Grandfather, great grandfather. That's yeah. Um, Nonetheless, it's like, it's, I think I found the date and it's like 100 years old. Yeah, we figured out it's about 100 years old. This guy was like definitely in his 70s, I would say. Um, he was so, so kind. Gave us all the backstory. Do you remember some of the backstory? Uh, his granddad or great granddad used it to make wine. Oh, yeah, that and was And they it. did occasionally do apple cider, but mostly wine. He was selling just the crusher, the, the part that mills it up and crushes it. And then asked me if we'd be interested in the rest of it, but it's missing a part. The press. The press. The, mm -hmm. the part that we're working on, working with right now. That has a cast iron bottom, and the barrel is like twice the size of that. But it's missing the screw, which I just put in, and a few other parts. So I'll have to source those or make those. So essentially, we're going to have two presses and one crusher um the bugs are so bad it's like got kind of warm here at the end of october and the gnats are awful um anyway so we're essentially gonna have two presses and one crusher which is great because we got the second press for free basically we don't live that close to a church no <laughs> bud has a, his bible app that reminds him to read the bible or whatever and so his church bells are going off at all times of day anyway zad is Up just kind of Separate lubing up the parts that need it cleaning really it up rusty. Um, like, what are you like, using to clean it? Just a uh, food grade silicone. So he's just spray. cleaning it up, doing all the sad things wild, that he does. I wire wheeled all that. Okay. I got that all clean and down inside the best I could because I only have certain tools and all I can reach so far. Yeah. So get it as clean as we can. And then I'm going to show you how to make apple cider using the crusher and the press. And I'm really excited. All right. So we're kind of learning this crusher. Zad is going to chop these apples up. We're going to take some out, try them, see how it goes. These are insane. So these were at the orchard. They were good for like juicing or whatever, not good for fresh eating. But I can't remember what kind this is, but these are gigantic. They're seriously like the size of the kids' heads. All right, so all hands on deck. We have these nice tubs that I showed in the video where I talked about what we brought home from Lancaster. So we're putting, a, we have three kinds of apples. We're putting a different kind of apple in each tub so that we can try to just mix the cider up as best we can. We have found over the years that mixing up when we do apple juice, apple cider, apple butter, uh, apple sauce, if we do a mixture of apples, that always seems to just make a really great yield. It makes a really great tasting product. Um, if you use all one kind, sometimes it's not, I mean, it's fine. It's just not always as good. So we love mixing things up. Um, we were able to support our local apple orchard when we got these apples and they sell them for an amazing price these were like i don't know 12 dollars a bushel or something super cheap um so i'm really excited to see how much we can get out of this i'm guessing so we're doing a bushel and a half i'm guessing we're gonna get three to five gallons so we'll see what happens all right so we got our three tubs full of apples we're gonna head outside and try the crusher all right, so I ordered two kinds of bags to put in the bucket. This is more like muslin. This is more like a little plasticky. We're not sure which one's gonna be best. So we'll try, probably try the muslin first because I like the way that looks better um, as far as like the 
uh, tech, not texture, the, the makeup of the bag. Like obviously less plastic is better and that one looks a little plasticky to me. We might return those and just try these muslin ones. All right, so we're gonna try this more like muslin-y type bag first. Put that on the bucket um, and see what happens. I don't know, we might like the other one better but we're gonna try this one first. All right, so we're gonna try to do one of each type of apple in the crusher first. So we're just using like our, you know, bowls that we have in the kitchen as kind of our scoops. That's said we need a clean feed scoop. I guess that's what we'll, if this works and we enjoy this, then that's probably what we'll do for next year's stuff. All right, so Jamie's been super excited to turn the wheel on this thing. Whew. <laughs> Growing pains. Jamie's been super excited to turn the wheel on this thing since we got it. So he is first up for turning. Um, we put the cinder block down there with the five gallon bucket hoping that that would catch, you know, going down in and not too far to the ground. So, like I said, just kind of testing a setup. So, this is super cool. I, I'm, okay, so Zad is thinking that the blades in this one are actually made for grapes, which is fine, we can use it for apples, but something that we'll probably try to look for on Marketplace down the road is see if we can find the one that has the blades for apples in it. Um, so if you have insight on that, I would love to, know any details you can drop in the comments any helpful tips about that all right so zad and bud are gonna fill the bucket fill the wooden barrel from the plastic bucket so we're dumping that in and the crusher did a pretty good job for not being specifically for apples it did a pretty good job all right so the muslin style bags have like a drawstring so zad's just pulling the drawstring and then we'll put the wooden piece on and then try our hand at the pressing all right so zad put the wooden piece on top and then he i had said you know he re-greased this and all of that because it was pretty hard to turn when we got it um and it was pretty rusty so he is going to work on pressing this he also had a genius idea also in my lancaster video i talked about all these things that we acquired from the fire company that was getting rid of it getting rid of kitchen things and they had one of these we have a few of these anyway but um zad had a great idea so we're going to put the juice into this container and then when we fill our gallon jugs to freeze all we have to do is use the spout so genius and so something that's added okay so we were kind of getting a little bit more schmutz in it than we like so we had an extra one of these bags so zad again with the great ideas said put the bag over top of this so we can kind of strain it before it goes in there All right, so we're finding that the pieces seem to be too big. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna crush them twice. And again, this could be rectified if we had the right crusher for apples, but I think that this will work. So we put everything through, we dumped the buckets back into our metal bins, and we're just gonna run them through the crusher again and then put them into the press. So I talk a lot about our boneyard and how we keep all these things around. Um, something that we always have laying around is cinder blocks because we always need cinder blocks. So we're gonna double stack cinder blocks underneath. Now this will vary, like depending on if you have it on saw horses or whatever. So we have it on saw horses. We're gonna do a second one because obviously you can see on the ground we're getting like a little bit of waste. So we're thinking if we can get the chute as close to the bucket as possible, less is gonna go out around it. I mean, no big deal. We'll scoop this up and throw it in the chicken coop. And we're learning because it's the first time we've done it this way. All right, so we added a third cinder block. The bucket's right under the chute. I think this is gonna work out really well. So in typical us fashion, we're already trying to figure out how we can improve this process. So I think we will probably build some kind of stand for this to sit on because it kind of walks when you're spinning it. So by the time we make a video about doing this next year, it'll probably look completely different. Um, so that definitely needs some improvements, which Zad can probably handle. This thing probably needs some improvements also. It looks like, I said, somebody probably rebuilt that base. Um, and it's okay, it just needs recenter. So Zad will probably need to work on that and try to improve that a little bit. But still happy with these purchases. I think we can make them our own as we do with everything else. And they'll work out really well. So we're finishing up crushing the apples that are left and then we'll press them. Like I said, we're only doing a bushel and a half. We didn't want to do a ton. I am really kind of thinking about going back to the orchard though and getting some grapes now because I really want to try grapes. Taking a pause for a snack break. What is better than a fresh 
crispy apple in October. Our mustard, which is delicious, store-bought cheese, bomb, but still good. So, little snack. Then All right, going. so we got a much more crushed consistency. We're gonna try that in the press, see if that goes a little bit faster. So, it's going better with the more crush. Our biggest struggle is just that we need to do some retrofitting with this base because it's not centered. And so it's, yeah, the, so the crank's not centering down the way it should. It's okay, but we definitely need to do some improvements. I never walked around as much as this time. All right, so we didn't do too bad. We probably have, I'm guessing we have about two gallons. I would say the average typically is a gallon per half bushel. We have a decent amount of scrap. So the plan is we're gonna let this sit here for, I don't know, but I need to do the animals and go for a walk. So we're gonna let this sit here, see if as it just kind of sits so there. So we'll let it sit here and we'll crank it every once in a while. Um, obviously not gonna let it sit here like overnight or whatever, but see if we can crank it down a little bit more. I have a good bucket of scraps here. So I need to make a decision whether I'm gonna use, I think I might make some into apple scrap vinegar um, and make some into apple scrap jelly. So that's where we're at right now. We didn't do too bad. I mean, I don't think two gallons from that is too terrible. Um, and I think- I feel like there's benefits to both. When we did the apple cider with the electric um, juicer, Okay, we basically got the perfect consistency for applesauce out of it because it like really, really pulverizes it, which is great because I got a ton of apple butter off of that. This one, I have a five gallon bucket of scraps that are like pretty sizable scraps. So I can use those to make apple scrap vinegar or apple scrap jelly. What I got off of the cider that we did from the juicer, I really don't feel like I could have done um, cider or done vinegar it was just too like almost saucy like it was perfect if you watch that video it was perfect to just throw in the roaster cook down make apple butter so i think there's benefits to doing this both ways um i think next year we may try to do a little bit of both because we kind of get a different byproduct which is fantastic because we can make more stuff with it so we are going to bottle this up and i'm gonna get the apple scrap vinegar started we'll work on apple scrap jelly i'm not gonna do that in this video but that's what i'm gonna use the scraps for so i'll show you this all bottled up and then we'll be done all right so my mom um always saves jugs for me because we don't really buy anything that comes in a plastic jug because we buy our milk and glass um and then return them to the farm so these are perfect my mom always saves them we hold on to them for occasions just like this so this apple cider is also very dark like it's probably amazing the littles are of course already taste testing it so we're gonna get these two gallons filled and then get this washed up and we're almost done. all right so he's working on filling the second one but the babies just need several tastes so just there. I feel like there. it's obvious, but I should mention it. Whenever you're freezing something, you definitely want to leave enough headspace that it has room to expand. Um, you know, obviously that these have a tapered top, so we could probably just leave a couple inches. He's going to fill this one and kind of see where we're at. We'll probably leave some out fresh. Um, this worked out really so well. So if you have questions about how to do apple cider, I feel like there are multiple ways that you can do this. Um, you probably need some kind of equipment of some sort, whether, you know, if you do a steam juicer and make apple juice or you use a crusher and a press like we did, or we use an, you use an electric juicer. Um, I will say I almost always see electric juicers at the thrift store for pretty cheap, five, eight bucks or something, maybe 10, which is way cheaper than they are new. Um, because I feel like people go through this like juicing phase and then they donate it. So you know they're always at the thrift store so look there if that's something that you're looking for obviously these vintage presses and stuff probably go for more unless you can run on a really good deal we paid i would say market value for the cider press we paid under market value for the crusher but then as a added bonus we got the other cider press that zad can probably fix up so we're definitely going to do some retrofitting on the press that we got i still feel like we got an amazing value for getting two presses and the crusher out of the deal um and this is fantastic so we're adding two more jugs of cider to our kitty for winter which is fantastic so if you have questions about any of this or how um you know how to make it how to store it any of that kind of stuff let me know we'll see you next time